Hello everyone and welcome to Blender 2.8. People have asked me to explain how to create parts in Blender for Kerbal Space Program and I have a very simple part that I need to create for Kerbal Space Program for my Mars colonization series. It's simply a xenon fuel tank. That's it. Uh, a fuel tank could be very simple. It could just be a sphere. In fact, that's how we'll start. But I'm also getting used to Blender 2.8 I previously used 2.79 and wasn't using the beta of 2.8 until recently when Steam decided to update my Blender because I have it through Steam for some reason. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to explain how I do things in Blender uh, through numerous videos, but starting with a simple part like a uh, fuel tank seems appropriate. I'm going to keep this one really simple, uh, though I'll show some of the common things that people use. So I'll, I'll probably, I'm, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. I just make some crap parts for Kerbal Space Program. Anyway, uh, you start off with the cube. I delete the cube. Um, add, mesh, and then what we want is a UV sphere. So there are shortcuts for a lot of things. Uh, some things I do with the mouse and just click on. Other things I use the shortcuts for. Uh, hopefully the shortcuts will show up in the corner here. Um, that is an uh, add-on called this screencast keys. Hopefully that works. I pressed N to bring this up. Let's see. Nope, it's not actually showing N there. Okay, so this sidebar here pops up with N. And among other things like this item, it shows you the location of the part. That, that's what I'll call it for now, the mesh. The rotation, the scale, the dimensions. Now, I want a tank that's five meters in diameter, and that's because that's the limit of my rocket. That's the biggest tank I'm going to be able to bring up. So, and it's going to be a spherical tank because xenon gas is best stored that way. Now, there are a lot of ways to scale up. You could literally just type in here five meters, five meters, five meters, or you could uh, scale up by a factor of 2.5, 2.5, 2.5, 2.5. Um, Shortcut key is pressing S for scale, and then I can just put 2.5. Just type in 2.5 and then I'll scale everything. And then to commit, press enter. So S and then the factor. So if I press S and I want to scale by 0.5, it'll cut it in half or scale by two back to what I want. Okay, so this is a sphere. Now it doesn't look very smooth. And of course, we will eventually want a nice smooth tank in our uh, in our game. So what we need to do is figure out where the smoothing is. It's no longer where it used to be. That much I know. Um, object here, shade smooth. It used to be that there were all sorts of stuff on this side, but they've sort of hidden things <laughs> to apparently make it clearer. Anyway, shade smooth is what we want. See? It's magic. And so it'll appear like this, except if you take a look at the edge here, you can still see the vertices, right? It's still jagged and you can tell how many um, bits you have made it out of. Now, you don't want to like make it out of a whole bunch of vertices because that's going to create extra lag and stuff, stuff like that. So you'll have to decide exactly where you want to draw the line about how complex the mesh is. Uh, this is what it looks like right now. So I pressed tab, which it would show you down here, but tab goes from object mode to edit mode. This is edit mode. This is object mode. Object mode lets you click on objects. For instance, this is the camera, this is a light, this is a sphere. And there are certain things that you can only do in object mode, like add other objects. For instance, if I wanted to add another sphere, this would be the place to be. If you try and add a new mesh, in edit mode, it'll just add it to this mesh in this hierarchy here. So you may want to do that, or you may want to keep things separate. In general, it's better to keep things separate for texturing later on. Uh, it is not a problem to do that. Anyway, we have this mesh, and it, it is, you could have a spherical tank, and it could be really simple, but I want to give it some additional character. And so I'm going to want to select faces. So right now we've selected all the vertices, which are the dots at the intersection points for all the lines. And then we could select the edges. That's this option here. 
or we can select the faces. I want to edit the faces and give it more character. And one way of doing that is pressing I for inset. And actually, I think, wait, ah, there we go, double I. Sometimes it's just one eye, I don't know why. So you see, I've inset each of the faces. So now we've got little ridges in the middle. Well, I'm gonna make them into ridges. See that? But importantly, we have the faces selected and not the ridge portions. Now there's another key, so I for inset and an E for extrude. E, well, you can make it, well, we don't want it around the median point. That <laughs> You can cause some havoc there, but what we actually want is to have them each extrude around their own little center point. So to do that, I'm sorry if this is a little bit fast. Uh, you might want to review. <laughs> there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff in Blender. There's a lot of stuff in Blender. There's this individual origin. See, this median point is uh, focusing on the average point of all the stuff you've selected. Individual origins will focus each bit on its own little center point. And so when I extrude now, okay, uh, first of all, I I didn't think I had normals, but all right. Um, let me just inset these again. Okay, so extrude. Okay, well, don't, don't worry about that right now. So you can extrude them out or in. I know it's a little bit hard to see, that's out. And then the way you move your mouse determines whether it's out or in. So that's in. So we've extruded them in. Now, so it, it sort of looks like a tank with like structure around it, right? But not exactly. And this way too much structure. There's too many of these ridges. We want to simplify the structure around the tank and also make sure the tank looks more like a single sphere rather than all these sort of indentations. So I'm gonna actually delete all this. Back to object mode. If you try to do it in here and I delete it, it'll only delete these faces that we have selected. So then you get that, which actually I want. I want this sort of skeleton thing, but not like this because it's too complicated. So I'm going to delete the sphere. I'm going to add a simpler sphere now. So add mesh UV sphere. And you can click down here where it says add UV sphere. You can decide how many segments and rings it has. Segments being the up down bits, the rings being the horizontal bits. And again, you can change the radius right now. So I want a radius of, not radius of five meters. I want a diameter of five meters, 2.5 meters radius. Okay. And then I also want hmm, half, half the segments and rings for the structure around the, the sphere. That should be more than good enough. Okay, and with that, I'm going to go back into this mode. Now, if you want to, uh, uh, for the structure, I really don't need it to have a pointy top. I'm being a little bit picky here. I'm envisioning what I want this to be. And maybe I'll edit that later, or uh, yeah, maybe I'll edit that later, that's fine. Okay, so we've got the faces selected. I'm going to inset again. Let's see, it's just one eye this time. And maybe that much. And then I, I do want to give it some depth, so extrude. And once we add set it to be around the individual points, it's still set like that. And then I want to delete. Now, important to note, uh, there's no inside face. You can see, so if, if you put the camera inside here, it'll look transparent from in here. There's only an out, outside pointing face. And uh, the way you can tell that is with the normals. The normals show you which way the faces are pointing and they're going to be transparent from the other direction. If you wanted the inside, you would need to fill in each of these. So if we go to vertices, like I would have to whoop, select these vertices and fill. And fill is F. 
So now I've created a, a face that's facing this way. But actually, I don't need those faces because those are going to be hidden by the sphere. We are now going to add another sphere. Okay, and right now it's the same size, but I want the sphere to be more spherical. So the original numbers, 32 and 16, and it needs to fit inside that structure. So now I want three point, uh, sorry, 2.4 meters. And actually it could be a little bit bigger than that, 2.45 meters. Let's see, does that meet it? Yeah, that, that looks okay. And then once again, we want object smoothed. Okay. Now, we could have even less structure around it, to be honest, but this is okay. And this is an interesting sort of start. And you can see we don't have to worry about those back-facing bits. Now, this dimple, this is what I wanted to deal with before. And uh, actually, I'll rename things. Uh, this, right-click, and... Well, actually, I guess... Uh, there we go. Double-click on it to rename. And so this will be the tank. And I'll just call this the structure. Okay, and then we can click on this to hide it. But on the structure, I don't like that dimple. So I want to flatten this a little bit. But I want to sort of flatten this. <clears throat> Excuse me. I sort of want to flatten this part here. But there's no like uh, edge right here. So I'm going to create an edge. Um, knife tool. I mean, use advisedly, but I'm going to use the knife tool. Click here. The knife tool creates a new edge. So if I click on one point and I click on another point, new edge, and it just keeps doing that. So it should snap to the vertices uh, if you click on them properly. and then enter to commit once you've got the last one. And now we've got a new edge. And I'm gonna take that edge, I'm going to hold shift and I just want to select select uh, that. I didn't want to move the 3D cursor. Another function that you might find handy is let I want to flatten this out and get them all to the same level. Well, this is, I want them in the same level in the Z axis. See the little axis there? That Z is up and down, and then Y and X are on the flat plane. Well, I want to have them all at the same point on the Z axis, so I press S for scale, Z, so it's confining it to the Z axis, and then press 0, and then that's it. <laughs> it'll, it'll put everything on the average point between. So here we have a nice flat bit. We have to do the same for the bottom. Okay. Now, it's, it's not a perfect circle because, you know, we've got little flat bits. Actually, I think I missed the vertice there. Mm. Okay, well, that, this seems like a good time to introduce yet another feature. Okay, um, I'll, I'll actually want to flatten it first and then introduce that. So I've selected all that. I'm going to select that one too which is one that I should have had, and do the same thing, S0, uh, SZ, then 0. Okay, but we have some extra vertices sitting around there that I don't want. See, there's, whoop, there's some here, and so C for circle select. Got these three here. I don't want, uh, wait, one of those, I want to make sure it's not the one at the bottom there. No, it's not. So these are all different ones. I want to merge them. So mesh, let me see where this is these days. Vertex, may, uh, merge vertices. Yeah, okay, and that's the same thing as before. Uh, merge, let's say at center. So Alt M to merge at center. There we go. And that's fine. And then, oops, I selected all. Circle select those two and Alt M again and at center. Okay, so the extra vertices are gone now. Looks nicer. Okay, but 
actually at the top and bottom, what I want are adapters for my docking port. So I've got a special docking port that's in the shape of a diamond. And so I want to add another mesh. So out of the edit mode, and I want to add a new mesh. This time, what we want is a cube. And the cube, every new object appears at the 3D cursor. So if you want to change the location of the 3D cursor, cursor, uh, shift right click will get you there. This is also sometimes good for getting the exact location of a particular point on the mesh. For instance, I clicked here and it sort of automatically snaps to the mesh and eventually I might want to put like say an attachment node or something like that and I can get the exact location. Now it really should be zero zero and then that's the height of it. So when we configure these parts in Kerbal Space Program, uh, we use this, we can use the 3D cursor to figure out the location of where we need to put the attachment nodes. So anyway, uh, we have a cube and I need to shape it in a manner that is similar to my docking port. First thing to do is I want to rotate. So this is the rotate gizmo and R is the shortcut key. G is the shortcut key for move. But I'm more used to doing those by hand. So we want to go to item. You see minus 38.9. I actually want minus 45. And so we get a diamond shape. And it's two meters in... Uh, the, the perspective is throwing me off here. So how do you get from one perspective to another? Right now it's not orthographic. Five changes it to orthographic. And then you can get the front view by, uh, oh, five on the keypad. Five on the keypad is orthographic and switches back from perspective to orthographic five on the keypad. Then one is front and three is right. Seven is top. And if you want to switch from top to bottom or left to right or from front to back, you use nine. So if you're already on bottom, nine will get you to top. If you're on front, then pressing nine will get you to the back. So that's how we do orthographic views. Now, this is a lot bigger than I thought it was. And that's because, oh, because the scale is, uh, it, I, I need this this dimension to be two meters. And right now it's this dimension that's two meters. So I need to divide by 1.4, roughly speaking. Another way is um, if we control A, commit the rotation, then it'll show it. So remember, I'll undo that. We add this negative 45 degrees here. And it's still thinking that this object should be oriented the way it used to be when it spawned it. But we can commit the rotation and say, no, actually use the coordinate system that we've got here right now so that this is the x-axis and that's the y-axis. It's going by its local coordinates that it had when it spawned. To do that, control A, apply the rotation, and now it's showing a dimension of two meters in the x direction and two meters in the y direction which is what I wanted. I'll actually scale. I just press S and I'm going to manually tweak that up to a little bit bigger. And then all I want is to scale the um, Y direction a little bit tighter. So scale, press S, then Y, and then I want to squish it. And then I don't need this whole bit, so S and Z. Okay, and then press G to move. Uh, G, Z, I only want to move it. Oh, oh no, I pressed S accidentally. Oh, and if you're in the middle of something and you accidentally did the wrong thing, you can right click to un uh, just immediately not commit that change. So if I pressed S accidentally and then Z and then I started scaling and I go, oops, well, what do I do now? Well, right click will undo that. So I want to press G, and Z to move it in the Z direction. And well, it's pretty big. Maybe I should just not have that as part of the mesh. 
I thought I could make it elegantly part of this. Or we could sort of drop the edges down. And I, I just wanted a platform for my for my docking port. And maybe if we could sort of have this drop down here so it's smoother with the rest of it. Um, what we want is loop cut and control R you can see there a lot of shortcuts. Hmm. Well, that might be a way of doing it. Okay, so if you only want to make one cut, you can click and then move it to wherever you want. Oh, that didn't work the way I expected it to. That's not how it used to be. Used to be that you would click and then you could move it around. Now when I click, I can't move it around. Hmm. Okay. Well, and also it used to be that you could make more than one cut. Oh, well, that, that works at least. Okay, well, I do want to make more than one cut, and you'll see why. going to make another one here, and I want to... I keep doing right-click to select things because that's how Blender used to work. It's not the best thing. Now I can take a look at this to see where I put them. I want to just round it off 1.61. Oops, on this side too. And I'm going to move these two to the same place. Shift to select more than one thing. Now there's the local coordinates. There's also the global coordinates. Might want to work with those. Oh, so you can just uh, copy this field if you want to propagate to another point and then paste control V copy control C paste control V and then you got that well that's sort of a platform thing could be spiffier um, another thing you could do to make it a little bit spiffier is various modifiers one thing we do need to do is have another one of these at the bottom Still not thrilled by it, but I'm going to want another one at the bottom. So for now, what we can do is just mirror it. Mirror. And what we want to do is mirror across the sphere so we can select the tank. And what we want to do is mirror on the Z axis, not the X axis. So now we magically have another one at the bottom and we don't have to create a new one. So again, there's this modifier button add modifier, they've got all these options, and then mirror it. Now we could have some other fancy bits, and as long as you don't commit this mirroring, don't click apply, you can continue to edit this, and it'll still make the same effect on this side. I'm trying to figure out how to make this fancier. Could move these vertices out. Then we could use the extrude thing again. And another feature is that if you want to select an edge, but let's say I want to select all the edges of that uh, particular one, you can hold down Alt and select the edge. So it'll just go all the way around, assuming it's continuous. Oh, that's not right. Hold on. I think I've accidentally got some extra edges here. So I'm going to select all, A. And then I want to merge doubles. Uh, duplicates. Clean up. Merge by distance is what it's called now. Um, oh, point oh one. You can see if I raise that, it starts decimating the thing. It says it's removed 12 vertices, so those weren't supposed to be there. 
Maybe that's why it wasn't beveling right. Well, this is a nicer bevel for sure. Let's go out of that view. Whoa, clamp overlaps can sometimes be helpful. Okay, I want two segments. One interesting thing, oh, the down here is the faces. We're not too bad, 2,000 faces isn't horrible. This is a nice little bevel it's got here. If we want to keep that. The problem is the bottom face is also beveled. I don't know if I want that, but it could be worse. We could make it more complicated, but this is all right. It'll be a good interface for my docking ports. So here's a tank. Is it a great tank? Nah, it's an okay tank. What we want to do is, let me get rid of the light and camera. I'm not going to need it. That's for rendering purposes. We're not rendering it in here right now. We're going to be wanting to import it into Kerbal Space Program. What I need is textures. And for that we need UV editing. Now on the left is a UV map. Let's start with the tank. <laughs> okay. You have to be in edit mode to unwrap it. So this tank has, uh, that's a nice unwrapping actually. Uh, honestly, in older versions, it didn't unwrap that nicely. <laughs> uh, okay. So S to scale, G to move. So I'm going to uh, put this over here on this side. We've got a UV map here. We need to assign a material for the parts. So, so there's a material here. Let's just assign that one. And that's probably, wow. Let me just go diffuse. That's simpler and use nodes. Okay, so I'm just going with diffuse. I'm using nodes and that material. Now, this is very important. Kerbal Space Program does not like more than one material per part. And per part means all of this business. So we want one texture for the whole thing. Okay, so our structure should also be... Oh, let's get out of edit. Structure should also be using the same thing, and the cube should also be using the same thing. And again, you'll only be able to see the mapping when you're in edit mode. So can't see it in object mode. And only when you've selected the bits. So I'm going to select all that. I'm going to move this one over to this side. So whatever texture we use, it'll be over here. And then I'm going to select the cube. And if you wanted, to, if you didn't like the way it was unwrapping, you could do a smart UV project and see, well, that doesn't look at, uh, any better. Um, cube projection. Wow. Cylinder projection. Mm. Sphere projection. Project from view. That, that could have some effect. If um, if you got a flat surface like this, for instance, I could just go like this, or go ortho orthographic top, and then new projection project from view, and now it's got this. That can be easier to work with in certain circumstances. Apply scale. Now maybe it has a uniform scale. Just wanted to see the bevel. The bevel's gotten a little bit yeah that okay, let's apply the bevel and then apply the scale. Okay, now it doesn't have that weird effect. Sometimes the order in which you do things makes a big difference. Now I'm gonna add the modifier mirror across the tank. And it's down there again. And now edit mode, select it all, unwrap. Uh, I'm not impressed. Uh, you, 
you didn't do that. Oh, the smart UV project is much better now. I think I might take this. I'll just take this smart UV one. So I'm gonna scale these. Now if you wanted to, I don't know if they've improved this or not, but if you wanted to export this, now where did they, UV, um, export UV layout, and then you have to save the image, but you used to have to save it for each of these. I'm going to shortcut that whole thing. You you notice how I put it in little uh, quadrants of this image. That's going to come in handy for what I want to do. So I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to prepare a very simple image. And that image will have one very basic texture in one corner, one basic texture in another corner, and one basic texture in another corner. Uh, so that each of these is going to get their own texture. And you know, it, it's more complicated if you want text on it or some specific uh, orientation to the texture, but I'm just going to use plain colors. Okay, and I'll, I'll bring that in. Okay, I've got my intended texture image from Photoshop. Okay, so use nodes and diffuse color image texture. So once we've got color to image texture using the nodes and we're using diffuse BSDF, open and I've got a blender folder and I've got a curl parts, xenon tank PNG. Okay, so this is the image and you can see I've made it very simply, <laughs> just little quadrants. This is a blank quadrant down here. Uh, this is sort of a brushed metal kind of thing. This is, uh, I, uh, normally it'd be gold foil, but I decided to go with red foil for once. And then uh, sort of a tiled texture for the top and bottom bits. So what we want to see is what this looks like in a textured view. And the way that works now is different from the way it used to work. So I have to figure that out. Well, let's go back to this one. Oh, uh, it's probably one of these. Viewport shading. Um, hmm. I, I don't really like how that looks, do you? Yeah, well, apparently that's how it looks. I'm going to have to think about that. That doesn't look so good. What if we just don't have the structure at all? Ugh looks like a planet I mean planets are nice and all but that's not really what I want okay maybe I should just go with the gold foil instead I feel like I feel like I've I've overdone it here it is with gold foil let, let me just roll with it so that we can get on with seeing it in the game and see how that looks so yeah, basically we've got it textured. Now it's a matter of getting it into the game. For that, I think I'll make it a separate video. So this is the easiest way of doing texturing, this, this business. Um, not, not really the recommended way necessarily, but it'll work. All right, I'll, I'll leave it here for now and I'll, we'll ponder this and continue with bring it into Kerbal Space Program in a subsequent video. Hopefully you learned something about Blender if you didn't know about that stuff. Probably a lot of people know much more than I presented here and can tell me all the better ways of doing this. I am probably aware of some of those. All right, so with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.